So Onward is a film on paper that at first seems like a perfect idea. A story about magic with elves, centaurs and dragons, mix in with a humorous twist of magic being replaced by modern day technology, and throw in the Pixar magic of characters and storytelling, and you have yourself a pretty good movie. This film is also inspired by the death of the director's father. The director, Dan Scanlon, in interviews is just incredibly emotional and passionate when he is talking about this story, and I love how he is emotionally attached to this film. It also brings a sense of innocence. So is Onward a good film? Well, overall, yes it is. But when Onward works, it works incredibly well. And when it doesn't, it falls really flat. Hi there, it's me, The Average Critic, and let's talk about Onward. A great movie, but why is it so disappointing? So let's start off with the positive. The idea of Onward is a clever one. The opening scene of the movie is classic Pixar, which is putting a twist on something we know. I love the scene where the Cyclops is just flicking the light switch off and on. The problem is they just don't dig deep enough into this subject. I suppose the point of the story is the characters becoming closer to magic, but the humor comes from the idea of magic becoming the past and the technology being the future, which could also be interpreted to how we are in our world of newer technology replacing the old ones. I do want to talk about something that really eats at me about this movie, and it's kind of a shame because I think Pixar is one of the greatest film companies to ever live. Since they have been making films, their whole motto in life in this business has always been about making great stories with great characters. It's never been about making money. I think the Cars franchise is complete proof of that. It's been about making good movies they can be proud of. But for me, Onward is the start in which the thoughts of Pixar's mind shifted in one sense, and that is through its casting. Now for me, the cast of Onward is just fine. Tom Holland, great actor, we all know that. Chris Pratt, great actor, we all know that. But what do these two actors have in common? They are both two of the biggest stars in the world right now. Pixar always do a great job for casting in their films, but Onward for me feels like they just got two of the biggest stars in the world thinking this will help sell their movie. Let's go back to some of the first few Pixar films. A Bug's Life. All the characters were actors from TV shows and sitcoms. Toy Story, with the exception of Tom Hanks, there was Tim Allen, Don Rickles, Jim Varney. These were all small-time B-list actors at the time. Even in Finding Nemo, they chose to cast a sitcom television host to be the voice of Dory. Why? Because she is the right voice actor for that job. When you think of famous roles throughout all films, some actors are constantly known for that role. Can you imagine anyone else playing Deadpool other than Ryan Reynolds? I know, right? Johnny Depp as Jack Sparrow. Captain Jack Sparrow, if you please, sir. Robin Williams as the genie. Hell, even Mike Myers as Shrek. No other actors could play these roles. It's like they were made for them. But for me, anyone could play Ian in Onward. He's a pretty basic, nerdy, unconfident character. And Barley, I feel, could be played by any actor with enough comedic timing. To me, the perfect casting is Jack Black. I don't know if he was unavailable or even if they thought about using him, but for me, Jack Black would have been much better to play Barley. Pixar generally cast based on acting ability to be a good voice actor. Being a voice actor is incredibly different to being a regular actor, which is why famous people like Nolan North, Seth MacFarlane, and Jim Cummings are so good at it. Now, Chris Pratt does actually have some voice acting experience doing a great job in the Lego movies, but for me, in this role, it just seems to fall flat because he's just sort of fine at it. As much as I am a huge Chris Pratt fan, in this role, he sometimes becomes too cocky for his own good. Back when he was doing films like Guardians of the Galaxy and the Lego movie, Chris Pratt was trying to prove himself as a worthy star, and he is. But I feel like in this film, he already knew he made it, and he decided, he doesn't need to try anymore. Tom Holland again does a fine job playing Ian, but he doesn't do anything special to make this role his own. There have been some iconic characters that have been perfectly cast in Pixar films, and most of them weren't the biggest stars in the world. Hell, even Coco, which is a film I didn't think too much of if you've seen my video, you can check my video right here, that film had a very small, unknown cast. The music in this film is also quite non-existent. Pixar have always created emotional beats with their music, and considering the composers Michael and Jeff Dana also composed one of my favorite soundtracks, The Good Dinosaur, this film's score barely stands out. I mean, just look at Pixar's musical library. When you think of Toy Story, you think of... You got a friend in me. When you think of Up, you think of... And when you think of Monsters, Inc., you think of... She's out of our hair. 
it's kind of a shame considering this film's theme on death and grief are quite serious, it doesn't dig deep enough in this story to have much of an impact on you as other films like Coco and The Good Dinosaur do, and the score very much reflects that in my opinion. So the music is forgetful and the cast is fine for the most part, but let's talk about what stops this film from being completely off-putting, and that's that this film has heart. The film starts off and it takes a while for the film to find its feet on what type of film it wants to be. It throws a lot of themes and storytelling beats to keep you interested, but you don't know quite what the story is trying to be until the finale. The film is about family, it's about death, it's about a relationship with the father, but it's also about the relationship between two brothers. The only gripe I have with the story is you struggle to understand the relationship and connect with the brother's father because he is just a pair of legs. As much as in the end the story isn't about that relationship, it's ultimately about the two brothers, the journey has you believe it's about the father and that's where it falls flat because you can't connect with two legs. I wanted much more of a backstory or more of a history about Ian and Barley's father to further understand the relationship. This is where something like the opening of Up would work well in this film, as in the film Up, even though Ellie is only in the movie for about 10 minutes, you get to see her character and you understand her. It seems harsh to compare this film to others, but in this sense, it just makes sense. When you think of the best Pixar films, they all tend to have one thing in common. We see the world from the viewpoint of something else, at the time being in our own world. Toy Story's idea is, what if toys came to life? see our world through the eyes of toys. Monsters Inc. Why do monsters scare us? It's for electricity. It's in our world, but seen from their perspective. Ratatouille, viewpoint from a rat. Finding Nemo, viewpoint from a fish. Wally, -E, robots. We see it from their perspective, but they have a normal emotional response to their world. Woody isn't a human, he's a toy, but he has human emotions. This allows you to connect with him as a character. This is why the Cars franchise just doesn't work. We are just in the Cars world. There is no world outside of it, and all the films I've just mentioned kind of have humans in it. We see it from an outside perspective. With Cars and Onward, there is no comparison between their world and our world. Obviously, you do connect with the characters, as their world isn't much different from ours, but what stops the world and story from standing out is making their world different. A huge element is the idea of magic and magical creatures, and we don't see much of what makes our characters individual, especially for our two main characters. I feel like we see it from the Manticore, as she gets to see how her life compares to that of her ancestors, which is really, really funny in the movie. And of course, Colt Bronco, as we get to see him, how he drives a car as he is a four-legged centaur. And of course, by the end, we get to see him, how he runs by the end of the movie. So the background characters become much more interesting than our main characters. Ian and Barley act like us. They pretty much look like us. So it means their interaction inside their world ultimately becomes a little bit stale, despite the idea for their world is very, very interesting. But in the end, the idea of Ian and Barley's relationship is incredibly sweet and very powerful. If you do have any siblings like I do, this film's climax will hit you hard, as it does bring this film back up the ladder. Just when you think this film is pretty basic in its storytelling, Pixar proves why they do what they do. So overall, Onward is a strong film with a surprising message about family. It has a lot of problems with it, and the pace of the film feels very episodic, but the passion behind it and the story is visibly there, and you can see how this story wasn't just a throwaway adventure story. It has heart, some fun characters, and an interesting idea I would love to see told in a different way. So after all that, it gets my professional rating of 7 out of 10, with a good average rating score for an average film. And it gets my personal rating of 6 out of 10, which is the same score I gave for Brave. Everything about this film screams a good honest movie. The characters are fine, the cast is fine, the music is fine, the world is fun, but it isn't explored enough for my taste. So thank you so much for joining me in this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit the notification button so you don't miss next week's video when I get to talk about Soul, which is a film I really, really can't wait to talk about. It's a very interesting one, that. So thank you very much for joining me in this video. If you want to support me even more, you can follow me on my social media on Twitter and Instagram. But thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.